waiting for the meat. So what happened today? Well, as you know, I'm looking to buy furniture for the sitting room. And I was very excited that the shops are finally open. I could go and have a look in person. And we've got three furniture shops near our house. We've got Furniture Village, Oakland, Oakland, Furniture Oakland or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. And DFS. DFS. And um, I went into Furniture Village first, had my mask on, didn't want to have my mask because every time I have my mask it just ends up giving me a headache. But I had my mask on and as soon as I walked in, this, this teenager was standing at the door with a bloody temperature gun in his hand. And they've got this station where you can sanitize your hands and he's going to zap my forehead. Um, to, to take my temperature. It really took me aback. It was the last thing I expected to see because I haven't seen it in any of the other shops. Yeah, I haven't seen that either. Um, and I've seen it on the TV and I've seen it in YouTube videos, but I've not come across it in person. Mm. So I, I immediately felt really affronted because somebody was going to... Somebody was asking me for data about my biological self mm. without Permission. checking that it was okay and also what's their understanding of what my temperature is mm. you know I was standing there and I, I said no I don't want to have my my temperature taken expecting him expecting him to allow me to decline which yeah. is the reasonable and decent thing to do mm. unless of course we're living in a you know a police state and when you're not allowed to decline, decline certain things. Yeah. So he said, well, I'm terribly sorry, but if you don't allow me to take your, your temperature, I can't let you in. And he said, it's all right. It'll only take a minute and then you can go in. I said, well, it'll only take a minute for you to let me go in. It's the principle of the matter. And for, furthermore, in my head, I was thinking to myself, what real understanding does he have to assess whether I've got a temperature or not? Yeah. I could have a urine infection that gives me a temperature. I could have a leg ulcer that gives me a, a temperature or any other infection. Mm. I could have cancer and have a, a, a low white blood cell count and have a temperature. Um, I could have run up the hill. Mm. I could be ovulating and have a temperature. Mm. Well, higher temperature, not an actual pyrexial temperature, but it's slightly a raised temperature if I was up the population. So there I was standing there thinking about all of these things and thinking, well, what? I could have just had an operation and was mm. developing a wound infection yeah. and was developing a temperature. He had no comprehension mm. of um, what that reading signified. Did it signify that I might have COVID? Absolutely not. Did, did me having a temperature, not having a temperature, mean that I didn't have COVID? He doesn't know. Mm. So, of course, he said, well, I'm going to have to go and speak to my manager. Okay, and this very unpleasant character comes across with his flowery shirt and his blue suit. Um, and, and, you know, and uh, he's got real attitude. And I'm raising my voice by this time because my blood pressure is up. Is he going to measure that as well? Yeah. yeah. My, my blood pressure is up. Uh, had he taken my temperature at that time, it could very well have been raised. Mm. Um, and, and basically, we're having this face off. And I said to him, you're leaving me no choice but to go elsewhere. And he, his attitude was that he couldn't give two shits of where I got my furniture from yeah. at that point. Basically, his entire demeanor said, we've got plenty of um, customers who want to shop at Furniture Village. We don't need you. And I said to him, this is not law. This is the only shop that's doing it. Mm. It's obviously the company policy. Yeah. And he said, yes, it is the company policy. Um, and everybody in this shop has agreed to. You're the only one, madam, who hasn't agreed to. What does that prove? Does that prove that I'm an idiot? 
product or doesn't know what I'm talking about? Or does it prove that the company are idiots? Or does it prove that the customers are idiots? Or the teenager is an idiot? Well, maybe we're all idiots. That's not the point. The point is, is that I have got the right to say no. Yeah. So anyway, I had to leave. And I was so upset that I went into the two other furniture shops told them the entire story, yeah. explained to them that I'd been declined entry. They were surprised. I also thanked them for not declining the entry based on a policy that essentially is not watertight in any way, mm. is not foolproof, doesn't really prove or disprove anything because everything is dependent on the background information of your health. Yeah. So, um, I um, sat down and wrote a letter to um, the email address that I found online, which is my experience at furnituregevillage.co.uk or something yeah. similar, and just outlined my problem. Yeah. You didn't get the sofa? I get a reply but what really surprised me for somebody who's very laid back and Doesn't very slow to anger mm. I'm relatively conservative I was so surprised at my own instinctive gut reaction to this youth and this bloody manager cocky as hell trying to take my temperature for no sensible reason. That was so windy. <laughs> well, I'm very proud of you, David. Yeah. 
that is the opposite because if somebody's taking a position which is contrary to the consensus the likelihood is that they are correct and the reason for that is because they will have had to do some work to take that position they would have had to look things up and they would have had to not take things on face value I mean there's always going to be people who just take the contrary view just for the sake of it but yeah so long as we're not talking about teenagers here um, you know being being in the majority doesn't doesn't put you in the right I mean I don't know who it was somebody said when you find yourself in the majority it is time to stop and think and there's going to be an awful lot of people who are going to be doing an awful lot of climbing down over the next months next few months and they're going to be all all sorts of people who there's going to be endless number of people who say oh well i never believed it all anyway and they're, they're not they're not going to admit what they've done they're not going to admit their silence and their compliance in, in, in the face of all this stuff you know I'm finding it already you know people who were saying that vaccine passports were a conspiracy theory you know all those months ago are now saying Oh well, uh, well I, I don't see a problem with it. But they weren't saying I didn't. I don't see a problem with it months ago. Because what they were saying, what they're basically saying is, we know that vaccine passports are wrong. We knew there were vaccine passports. Vaccine passports were wrong then. So we wouldn't have supported them. But once it became obvious that that was what the government was going to try and force through. they're now too cowardly to, to, to object to the government. So they just say, oh, I don't see any problem with it. So what's the difference between now and then? But I did wish I'd been there today. He said to me, Paul Blood, look, I'm only doing my job. Well, is this a teenager? Yeah. 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 And this is how it starts, you know. How far is it from I'm only doing my job to I was just following orders? <laughs> yeah. It's no distance at all, is it? You know. Just following orders. It's so important though to complain. Yeah. You know, even if it's just going to sit on file. I'm hoping that the main thing is that it's counted and, you know, it's counted and people know that there are so many complaints coming in. Mm. Rather than to just walk out and, you know, go somewhere else and not yeah. say anything about it. When I was on a job with Adam, we went into the, um, where was it? Subway. Went into a subway. And they, they started telling me I had to have a mask on. And I didn't really react very well, and I sort of told them I was stupid and stormed out. But um, <laughs> and went next door and had some fish and chips, and they didn't give a shit. So. But this is it. This is this is exactly what I mean by a, a wasted. You know, it's got to be long. It's got to be counted. Well, it was counted because Adam, sort of on my behalf, actually, he. Uh, you know, he, he trotted next door with me, you know, um, and had fish and chips as well. But he actually, he actually took the time and emailed them and complained. Yeah. And they they, they climbed down completely, and what said they, they said? and just said, well, you know, we're sorry you had a, you know, bad experience. We know that, you know, not all disabilities are, you know, visible, Obvious. and we're very sorry. And the next time I went in, they didn't say a thing. So, okay. So, because they'd apologised, I thought I'd give them another chance. Absolutely. So, and that's that's completely reasonable. Mm. That's reasonable. But you you were right to um, to 
dig your heels in because this is not normal this is not bloody normal it's not normal but i think i think that my primary outrage was due to somebody taking some data and not really understanding it in, in its fullest sense mm. therefore it was just an exercise to make me feel safe yeah it was, it's, well yeah. i didn't feel unsafe to begin with yeah yeah it's just a pantomime isn't it it's like oh well let's do this thing and it'll look like we're taking it seriously yeah and in fact it just they don't know what they're talking about they don't know what they're talking about mm. i just I just wish that I'd had the presence of mind to go through all of the details that, that I, I put some of them in the email, but I didn't actually say them to the smug manager. Well, you know, the fact is that you you did say them. You did say them. It was a very good letter, by the way. Very good email. Well, you're the king of letter writing, so that's a compliment. I think? Yeah. I thought that was pretty good, what you said, actually. But you know, it's not normal. It's not, not, you know, we can't allow things like that to become normalised. No. You know, every time you go for, you know, a fry up in a cafe, oh, let's all take your temperature. It's, no. You've got to kick up a fuss. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you go into, you know, go into a corner shop for a pint of milk, oh, take your temperature. It's not normal. It's weird. It's just bloody weird. Incredibly stupid. See, when I went to London, I, um, I've been feeling that this whole narrative is, you know, is running out of steam now. I've been feeling that for a little while. And that March I went to last time, you know, I thought, you know, it's becoming increasingly apparent that people aren't believing this stuff. And, and of course, I, it became even more so. I mean... And it's, it's, there's a lot of people, sort of normies, who are just, would be, who are perplexed by the fact that the BBC didn't even mention that several hundred thousand people were marching in central London. Didn't even mention it. You know. But Stephen, you know all of the, the, the drongos, you know, the sheeple? Mm. I mean, I can't understand how they can't put two and two together. There must be a process in their thinking that I'm not privy to, because it just doesn't seem obvious to me how they, they're coming up with wanting to believe everything that's told to them, even if it's nonsensical. Um, they actually think that by adhering to the rules, we're all in it together. Mm. Let's, let's have one big push, guys. Mm. Adhere to the rules and we'll go back to normal. Mm in the summer? Yeah. They said there won't be new it won't be normal, it'll be the new normal. And vaccine passports and you're not allowed to go abroad and uh, you know all those sorts of things. You know and the thing is that that is it is counterproductive. I mean one of the one of the things they do is they use good people people's good natures against them. That's the first thing. We're all in it together. Um, and the perfect piece of propaganda my mask protects you so you can't not wear one now because because we've all established that my mask protects you and not me. Yeah. So I can't just say, well, I don't care about being protected. You know, I'm the granny killer. But what about all those people that have been vaccinated? Um, yeah, well, Aren't yeah. they now no. immune? No, no, you still, you still get it, still pass it on. Still pass it on a, asymptomatically, which, which is perhaps the biggest lie of this whole thing. Um, because the, the, the evidence for that is just, it's gossamer thin, it really is, um, and that's what the whole House of Cards is built on, but 
that's the first thing they do. They they, they try to get everybody to sort of pull in the same direction. Now, you know, up to a certain point, everybody, um, everybody, uh, you know, making sacrifices for the common good is admirable. But it, it's 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 turned over. It's turned over from that. It's switched over from that to you're a bastard if you don't comply, you know, and you're in the minority, so we can bully you. I remember seeing those videos of, taken in America of all of those shoppers in, uh, there must have been about, oh, I don't know, 10 shoppers in the supermarket uh, throwing someone out, you know, just saying, leave, 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 until this guy without a mask left. Really? A, you know, it's just become an exercise in making everybody comply and I don't know when it when it was because I went along for, went along with it for about two weeks and I think it was I think it was the the relish with which the police started enforcing the rules which made me you know, sort of take stock. You know, like that. You know that they enjoyed it, and and we like our position with all this power. You know, we'd like this to continue. Thank you very much. It's been a real opportunity to see the different layers of influence, though, mm. in in the government and the agency supporting the government. Yeah. You know, the um, the psych unit, what's it called? Oh, the nudge unit, yeah. The nudge unit. Yeah. You know, I'd never heard of such a thing. No. I mean, is it new? How long has it been in use for? I don't know. I, I think it's quite new, but maybe I'm wrong. I, it does have a name, doesn't it? The, yeah. You know, I had no idea that Yeah, the but unknown never, unknowns, yeah. I, I, I'd never heard of it. Yeah. It's funny, you know that, um, you know, uh, Susan Mitchie, I think her name is, Susan Mitchie, she's one of the members of SAGE. Um, and she, you know, is big instrumental in all this stuff. And, you know, I, I, a lot of people got that, that teacher I, I spoke to at the last um, at the last demo, you know, he said he's in a he's in a school with around a hundred other teachers, and he says they're all communists. He says they're all Marxists. That was the word he used. And I've never really been sort of on side with this idea of them, um, um, you know, communists everywhere. But he said that it's true. They're everywhere. And he was the only person in the school who didn't wear a mask. And because it isn't law, they couldn't make it, you know. And and when I think of someone like Susan Mitchie, who's who's in Sage, you know, it's very very close to the top of government and is directing policy. And we've never elected her; she's just there, you know. She's one of those experts that we're all supposed to uh, fawn over. But you know, in the you know, way back in the 70s and 80s, the, the Communist Party of Great Britain was considered to be an enemy of the state because it pledged its allegiance to the Soviet Union and not to this country. And so they, um, it was, they were considered to be actual enemies. And then you've got somebody like that, who's right up next to Boris Johnson. You see, the only thing I know about it all of that business, communists and 
is from the Cold War. Yeah. You know, uh, Private Benjamin, you know, with Goldie Hawn. Oh, yeah. She was told off because her boyfriend was a red. Yeah. But that, that's all I, that's yeah. all I know about it. Mm. You know, Goldie Hawn is all I know about it. <laughs> you know, and now all of a sudden it's a matter of yeah. my own liberty and my children's liberty. Yeah. And I don't know anything about it. Yeah. And it's compounded by technology. Yeah. That's the new element that they yeah. never had before. Yeah. And surveillance and surveillance technology. someone who follows um, who follows socio-political or geopolitical stuff all the time you know um, but you do if you've got to a stage where suddenly a policeman is asking you to see your papers in the street when they never did before then you know something's wrong you know and don't, don't the sheep will have a bloody instinct about things well I think it's been suppressed and I think it's people's good natures and I think there's an awful there's a mass of people in the middle a mass of people probably 80 percent of people will just go along with anything for quite a life you know and that's a bit depressing but what you have to remember is it, it's it's rarely the, the majority of people who make the difference you know it's a hardcore of determined uh, a, hard, a hardcore determined minority is that all no the handbrake hasn't been on for the last 20 miles. Because I can smell sort of a rubber smell. Can you smell it? Because I can smell it strongly. Mm, yes, a bit. But I don't think it's coming from us. But I do think that more people are sort of tuning into their gut instincts now. You know, uh, I, I was speaking to someone at the, the march saying he thinks it's going to have to get an awful lot worse before it gets better. Now, you know, that's not a good thing. Because, you know, we're not at the stage where, you know, you're getting the four o'clock knock at the door. In fact, there was a political sign, did you see that, of a, for somebody, an independent, not Tory, not Labour, not Lib Dems, which is interesting. Conservatives or the Labour Party are not coming to, to help us to sort this out because the Conservatives and the Labour Party are exactly the same. 
you know, they're just exactly the same, just different colour rosettes. So long as you've got you know, so long as the institutions, the structure, government, etc., have got the ability to fine you, mm. they've got the police on hand, the army, yeah. uh, they can imprison you and take away your freedom. They have got, they're holding so many of the cards. Mm. Yeah, and that, that they, it, it's like when, um, uh, you know, Edward Snowden, um, you know, blew the whistle and all their spying, and it wasn't just the Americans, it was the, the British Secret Service as well. Um, and all of the things that they were doing were illegal. And there was a big scandal, and everyone said, oh, tap, 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 isn't it terrible? And so they introduced a law to make it legal. And they said, all those in favour, oh, okay, yeah. And, and so yes. the thing that was illegal is now exactly. legal. So you've got, you've got a, a load of people who can change the law from under your feet. Yeah. So it is, yeah. So you know, what what chance have you got? I don't know. I mean, the chance you've got is what I felt on Saturday, and I don't want to overread the pudding by saying there were a million people there or anything. But I got the feeling that, and I've been getting this feeling for a while, that they thought they would got it in the bag. They thought they got us all compliant. They thought that we were all all towing the line and because of a, a few honest and brave individuals they uh this one mm -hmm. yeah um who protested when it was deeply unpopular to protest about this you know they've got suddenly got well i think millions of people on their side and there's still millions more to wake up, but I got the feeling on Saturday that it wasn't the pushover that they thought it was going to be. You know, I mean, half of half of the states in America have. You're talking about the march through London. Yeah, I'm talking about the march through London. Yeah, but I, but America is still important because you know half of the states in America now have no restrictions at all, and a few of them, you know, notably. Florida, I think, and Texas, and one or two others, have actually outlawed the idea of vaccine passports. They said you're not allowed to discriminate against people. And that's quite hopeful, because we, we tend to import everything from America anyway. But, um, so there can't be, um... You know, as a, as a foreigner, you know, I, I'm very aware that, um, in times gone by that one of the biggest reputation that the people of this country had was that the men were gentlemen and there was there was a code of the gentlemen and fair play and um, upholding the basic rights mm. the basic human rights that's that's really you know, everybody knows abroad that the English love to queue. Yeah. Nobody else queues. Yeah. You know, but just the fact that they queue, it, it sort of... Um, it's a shorthand for something, isn't it? It is. It is. Yeah, and an so, Italian, Italian queue like that, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite upsetting for me to see how they're being taken advantage of, mm. how their reasonableness and their and their laissez-faire, you know, and their sense of li live and let live mm. has has been used against them. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, 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 these people are psychopaths and they're, they're criminals. And we've got to find some way of getting rid of them and punishing them. See, that's key. They have to be punished. I feel like punishing Furniture Village. Yeah. Right, you heard it here, don't go to Furniture Village. I've got a, I've got a desire for revenge. Yeah. <laughs> and and likewise, you know, I will have a desire for revenge for these two years that will, I will never have back. Yeah. And my children will never have back. Oh god, yeah. Yeah, because they've you know, that hasn't been easy for them, has it? I'm not one 
for revenge, but the it's not re it's not revenge actually. It's justice. Justice. That's it is right, justice, yeah. justice, and they, that's these right. people have to be punished. And one of the things about justice is, is that it's meant to send a message: you don't do this. If that's you right. do this, right. this is what happens. And what is happens so often in this country, in America, and probably other countries all around the world, is that the people who do the crimes never face the judgment that they should. I mean, look at Tony Blair, for instance. He thinks he can do anything. Well, look at most criminals. Yeah. I mean, it's only if you're a, a driver without a seatbelt that you actually... Yeah. ...that the police ever do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but everybody else, forget it. Yeah. Forget it. There is no justice. Yeah, and the police force is, is, is... Well, they're not really a police force. They're just an enforcer of government diktats, right. which is not the which same thing at all. Which changing to yeah. suit them. Yeah. Just bully boys. You know, they, they go and do the government's dirty work. You yeah. know, they're the, the plebs, you know, they're the plebs from the village who come and, you yeah. know, yeah, well, that's what do happened the dirty on, work in the, in the manor house. But that's what happened in, uh, on Saturday in Hyde Park. The, whole, uh, the, whole, the police were actually quite meek. Um, for the met because of the when the march was going on, because the numbers were so huge, I thought, well, we can't stop that. And a lot of them were sort of marching, sort of along with the march and talking to people and stuff. I mean, I wasn't going to talk to them, but some people did. And uh, and I thought this is sort of unusual. They're being friendly. They're being sort of yeah, just like your friendly. Friendly copper. You're friendly copper. You're friendly Bobby. Uh, <laughs> On his bicycle. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> but I think it was just because they thought, well, there's too many of them. There's nothing we can do, you know. So they, they, um, uh, they caved to the inevitable, you know. Um, and it was only at the end of the day, and I don't know who was it who did this. They decided to go into. Hyde Park there was a load of people there and try and break something up yeah and that's it, what that happened last time and it turned really nasty and mm -hmm. and I y you have to wonder whether the whole point of them doing that was so they could get some so that the newspapers could could, could get some footage of um, you know violence yeah you know and it makes me feel so sad when I see that violence you know it makes me feel sad because I, I can hear you listening to those um, videos posted on Twitter. The really, yeah. they sound violent. There's yeah. men sort of shouting and there's this discord and you can hear it in their voices. I just have a feeling of sadness that it's come to this. I hate hearing it. Mm. To, to think that this is happening to people, you know, my fellow citizens. Mm. In one of the most peaceful societies on earth. Tragic that, it, that 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 peace of mind and order has been robbed from us. Yeah, but there comes there comes a time when you have to fight back, you know. And you know, as is often the case, people think, "Oh well, it's not the hill to die on, is it?" Oh well, you know, it's yeah, not, just go along with yeah, it. Yeah, I'll be all right, and Sooner it's you... not so bad. And, uh, you know, it, it, it always falls to the same people to say, you know, to draw the line in the sand and say, no, and you did that today. Because it would have been much easier if you just go, all right then. And you know, the poor bloke, he said, well, I won't do it on your forehead, I'll just do it on your wrist. Yeah. He just didn't get it. He didn't get it. And the yeah. fact that he doesn't get it means yeah. that he's being taken advantage of and he doesn't even know it. Yeah. See, that's what standing up means. It's, it means entering into an uncomfortable and confrontational situation, you know, where you could quite easily have avoided it by complying. And that's what most people do, you know. Complying blind because they're not all 
altogether sure what's on at the other end. I mean, they're, they're hoping that through complying, they're going to have their yeah. lives back. Yeah, I mean, my mum said to me, you know, because she gets it from me, from one side, she gets it from my sister, who's got the other point of view. And, uh, you know, she was quite apologetic to me when she said that she got the vaccine. And, and you know, I don't mind if she got the vaccine. I mean, she's, she's 73, you know, she's, she's supposedly a vulnerable person, you know, in the vulnerable group, you know. I don't care if she gets the vaccine, but she it's said... It's her choice. Yeah, but she said, oh, I just thought, what if I just get it, it will, we'll go back to, we'll go back to normal, so, you know, sooner. We'll get back to normal somewhere sooner. I didn't have... the variant? Yeah, well, I didn't have the heart to say to her, you know, that the more you comply, the worse it will get, you know. I didn't want to give her too much grief over it. <coughs> but, you know, as you know, my sister is like, you know, she's well on with the old COVID nonsense and mask wearing and that sort of stuff. She asked me whether I got the um, vaccination the other day because I've had my letter. Yeah. Remember I had my letter? And uh, and she said, uh, did I have the vaccination? I said, no. She said, oh, why is that? I said, because I don't need it. And that was enough to shut her up. The frustration is that how can you make her see your point of view? Isn't that always the biggest yeah, challenge? Yeah, it's difficult. It's difficult. You know, and the thing is that these things are not easy to, to understand, you know, that... The, it's quite easy to understand to say, well, you know, let's all get the vaccine and we'll go back to normal. That sounds quite easy to un understand. But when you have to start saying, well, look, you know, you know, there is the, new, the Nuremberg Code written for a reason to stop people having experiments done on them against their will. You know, there's a reason that was written. time.